Hey everyone, in this lesson, let's discuss some creative editing ideas that we can use to incorporate some unique style and looks into our images. The first creative editing idea is to build reflections in your image with using just one single photograph. So what we're going to do is we're going to be taking this image layer here, we're going to be duplicating it, flipping it, and rotating a bit. And then we'll do just a little bit of masking, but it sounds kind of complicated, but it's actually really pretty easy once you get the hang of it. So let's just first duplicate this original layer that we have. To do that, I'm going to select this button here. You can also right click a layer and choose duplicate layer that way. And I'll just double click this layer to rename it copy. And once I've duplicated that layer, I'm going to need to flip this layer horizontally. So to do that, I'm gonna hit V on my keyboard. That will grab me my transform tool which I can use to flip and rotate my layers really easily. So in the top tool modifier bar here, we're gonna be using these two arrows here to flip our image horizontally. And it doesn't actually matter which arrow you choose, we just need to create a reflection on the opposite side of the scene. So if I pull back on the opacity slider here for this copy layer, you can see we've just sort of created a reflection from the middle of our scene. So now what we need to do is we need to rotate our copy layer. So depending on what subjects you want to keep on the scene, you may want to rotate it to the right or rotate it to the left, i.e. rotate clockwise or rotate counterclockwise. Well, let's do them both. Let's start with rotating clockwise. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our copy layer, we're going to use our transform tool here, and we're going to go up to this rotation option. It's going to double click to type in there and I'll just type in 90. We're going to rotate it clockwise 90 degrees. Just like that. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I want to maintain these boats within the scene. So if I pull back on the opacity here of this copy layer, you can sort of already see this reflection building where we have our boats on the bottom and then we have our boats to the left and they're reflected on each other. If I would have rotated it in a different direction, it would have kept different subjects. So I'm just going to hit C on my keyboard real quick once I've rotated and I'm going to grab this one by one square ratio here. And that's going to eliminate any of that excess from the left or the right. So with our layer duplicated, we flipped it, and then we rotated it clockwise to the right here. The last step is just to mask away the bottom right of our copy layer. And this is sort of the rule that you'll run into when you're playing with this, is that if you rotate 90 degrees to the right or clockwise, you're going to want to remove the bottom right of your scene, i.e. this sort of bottom right triangle from the photo. If you rotate it 90 degrees to the left, i.e. counterclockwise, you're going to want to remove 90 degrees of the bottom left triangle. And so kind of sounds a little confusing, but the more you play with it, the more it'll make sense. And so, with that, that logic there, remember we rotated 90 degrees to the right, so we're going to remove the bottom right of this copy layer. Rotate to the right, remove the bottom right. And so I'm just going to go into my masking options here, and we're actually going to grab our line mask tool. You can grab the line mask tool with Shift and P on your keyboard. And what I wanna do is just drop a point at this top right corner, you could drop it at the bottom left if you wanted to. I'm just gonna start from sort of top to bottom here and I'll just drag this down over my bottom left corner. And then I'll complete my triangle here. And remember we're masking away the bottom right. We want to remove this section. So we want to make sure this mode here is set to paint out. And we want opacity at 100 and we don't want any feathering at all. So let's go down here with our paint bucket and because it's set to paint out, we have just a little minus sign in our paint bucket so we know it's good to go. And then we just click and we get out of our mask here and there we go. 
we've built a cool creative reflection there just by flipping, rotating, and doing a little bit of masking. So let's grab an image and we'll do the exact opposite. We'll rotate it to the left and then we'll remove the bottom left. So with this photo here, let's do the same technique, but let's rotate it to the left instead. So remember we got to duplicate the surf layer or the original layer that we have. Once we've duplicated that, we're gonna hit V on our keyboard to grab the transform tool. And with that transform tool selected, we're gonna head up to the top tool modifier bar and we're gonna use these arrows here to flip it horizontally. So that if we go into our opacity slider for that layer and we pull it back, we just have that general sort of reflection in our scene. With that copy layer flipped, let's go up and rotate it. But this time let's use negative 90 so that we rotate it counterclockwise. We have that excess on the left and the right there. So let's hit C on the keyboard, get that one by one crop in there to sort of get rid of that. So now what we need to do is just remove the bottom left. Remember we rotated to the left, we're gonna remove the bottom left. To do that, I'll hit, or I'll hold down shift and hit P on my keyboard to grab my line mask tool. I'm just gonna drop a point there, the corner, drop another point there, and then I'll just complete the triangle. And remember we're painting out, so we need our mode set to paint out there so that we can mask away the bottom left. and we can build our reflection that way. And I was a little bit sloppy with my diagonal line, so you may want to be a little bit more precise there, or you'll sort of end up with a few mismatches there. So let's just redo our line real quick. I'm just gonna be a little bit more precise. There we go. And I'll just scroll down. Do the same thing over there. And we'll complete our triangle. And there we go, much better. There was just a little bit of offness there going on. So if you can be a little bit more precise with your diagonal lines there, you don't have to be super duper precise, but it is nice to just get the exact line there on that half of the scene. But you can see it's a really fun technique for just creating a sort of fun and unique look on your photograph, and it's really relatively easy to do. So let's jump into the next creative editing idea. The next creative editing idea is to build up a double exposure look using different layers. And so when it comes to double exposure looks, your main image should look similar to this. You really want sort of a high key photograph. You want your subject isolated in a white background and even you know low key photography where it's isolated in a backdrop of pure black is nice as well but i prefer high key images such as this one for building double exposures if you can really isolate your subject in front of a pure white background those work really great for double exposures and so this image here we're going to be working with this horse portrait here and we're going to be adding on these different elements into it. So let's start, I'm just gonna grab this horse portrait first. And the reason I'm selecting it first is because this is sort of the base image that we're going to stack all of these other images on top of. And then I'll just select these other photographs and we'll select layers here. And that's going to take these four layers into the edit module so that we can modify them into one cohesive complete layer. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of housekeeping and drag that birds layer above my river and trees layer. And then I'll just disable that. I'll disable the river and trees. And I'm really gonna focus first here on my mountains. So with my mountains layer here, I'm just gonna select it. And we're just real quickly going to, right out of the gate, create that double exposure look. And the key to creating the double exposure look is to go into your blending options. You can access those with this gear icon here and then go down to screen. You can see already, if I move this around, we're sort of mimicking that double exposure look within our photo. So let's just position this in an interesting part of the photograph here. 
going to position it down here at the bottom and then I'll drag it up to the top there. Just like that. So with this photograph here, I'm going to add in a little bit of contrast in the develop tab and then boost the whites just a little bit. And the reason I'm boosting the whites is just to remove a little bit of the horse in that top section, just so that we can sort of create that faded look up top there as it sort of brings down the layers into the horse. So we're done with the mountains layer there. Now let's bring in that river and trees layer. I'm just going to enable that there and I'll select it. And so with this river and trees layer, we need to blend it onto the scene just like we did the mountains layer. So let's use our gear icon here. We'll go into that screen blend mode again. And with this layer, I'm actually going to use my transform tool up here to flip it again so that I can position this and I can bring that river section into the scene a little bit to sort of draw the viewer's eye into this top area. Sweet. So we're good there. Let's go into this birds layer here and I'll enable that and right out of the gate to sort of eliminate the background behind these birds. So I'm just going to go into my masking options or my blending options rather with this gear icon, my blending options, and I'm going to choose multiply and multiply is going to quickly remove that bright section from behind our birds. We can then use our transform tool to resize the birds. We'll make them quite small and we'll just sort of place them in this sort of valley section of the horse. And let's actually lower the opacity for those guys so they're not so intense there, maybe around 50% or so. And it's starting to look great. We've sort of built our double exposure look into the scene. Now what we can do is we can sort of fine tune and mask away layers or just fix positions of layers if we need to. So the one thing I want to do is just remove some of this river and trees layer from particular sections of my scene. So I'm just going to go into the masking options here. I'll hit B on my keyboard to grab my masking brush. And I'm going to leave my feathering quite high so that I have a nice soft brush edge. And I'm just going to paint away some of these sections that I don't really want from that layer. And it actually does a whole lot up here. So I'm actually going to probably leave just a little bit of that there. And that will create a nice little area for my birds there. Let's actually just lower the opacity on this brush. And I'll make it sort of large here. And we'll just brush right where our birds are at there. Maybe one more over there. And that will just add in a little bit more of that horse into the scene there. This river and trees one, if we reset the mask there, you can see it does a whole lot up there to remove that hair. And if you're looking for that particular look, then by all means, uh, leave it because it does actually look really cool without it. But I just wanted to add in a little bit more there. So I'm just going to undo that there. And I think that adds a nice little look to the birds. And I may paint away or paint in a little bit more of that layer. Perfect. Cool. So if we view the mask here, I just painted away this section near his nose and then some of this top area. So if we view this and turn this off and on, it's sort of creating that look within the scene. And I think that's looking pretty great so far. Let's just go up here. Let's right click and let's choose new stamp layer. The new stamp layer is going to take these layers that we've been working on. It's going to duplicate them and then merge them together into one complete layer. So let's rename this dub exposure. And now we can modify this exposure as a whole. And the best looks for double exposures, in at least in my opinion, 
are desaturated looks. I really like either pure black and white or maybe some sort of moody LUT looks. Um, but let's play with it. We'll go into the effects tab here. I'm gonna add a filter and I'll just add a LUTs filter. And we'll go into the black and white here and we'll just kind of scroll through these. Ooh, and I really like that one, that dark night one. So let's actually keep that one. Make sure we don't have any saturation by removing that saturation there. And then let's add one last filter and let's add a sun star here. Just gonna bring in the sun star by clicking on that third preset style there in the sunflower filter. I'm gonna head down to my transform section I'm gonna grab this little option here by my transform section, which will allow me to position my sun star. Position it sort of over these cliffs there as they're peering in. And then really all we have to do, we'll just drag that sun flare below our LUT and that will incorporate it into the scene or incorporate that color onto our sun flare. And then we can sort of fine tune the amount, but I think it's looking pretty good so far. And so if we turn off sort of all our layers here, this is our original. We gave it that sort of pure double exposure look with the mountains there. We brought in these river and trees for a little bit more oomph there. We could have probably painted some more out, but you know, the more you play with it, the more you'll kind of find what you like. And then we have our birds coming in and then we sort of brought it all together with this. And one thing I'm gonna do with this so I'm gonna to go to the develop tab real quick. I'm just gonna pull back a little bit on the exposure and add some contrast. Just to give it a little bit more of sort of a harsh look to it. Cool. So that's how to take different layers and build a double exposure with them inside of Photo Raw. Let's take a look at the next creative editing idea. My next creative editing tip is to create dual lighting within your scene to mimic colored gels within a studio. And to do that, there's a couple of different ways you can do that instead of Photo Raw, but I like to use LUTs to create this effect. So we'll go into the effects tab, we'll add a filter, and I'm gonna add the LUTs filter. And for this scene, let's create a blue look on the right and then a warm reddish look to the left. So we'll keep our blues in here, this uh, LUT that we're using, the default LUT, which is the blues one. We'll keep this in here, but let's just apply this to the right of the scene. I'm gonna hit M on my keyboard to grab my masking bug, drop that down, and then I'll rotate this so that I just have this applied to the right. I'll use this larger handle here to sort of position this. And I just wanna position it sort of right over that shadow on our cheek there. Let's add in just a little bit of contrast and a little bit more saturation. Now we're going to go into our LUTs masking options here. We're gonna copy that mask that we just created. We'll add another LUTs filter. We'll use the sort of reddish preset here in the LUTs filter, this Bernaf one, and it's really nice for a nice sort of reddish appearance on your scene. And of course you could use any sort of dual colors that you want to, but red and sort of a dark, cool blue work really nice together. So we've added on that LUT there, but it's being applied to the entirety of the photo. So we'll go into the masking options and we'll just paste that mask that we just created. And then we'll invert it so that it's applied to the opposite direction. So now if we hit the backslash key on our keyboard, We have this nice sort of blue cool tint to the right, and then we have this warm red tint to the left. And one thing I like to play with whenever I'm modifying these dual color shots, especially if they're darker portraits, is I'll add sort of a, a smoky overlay. So I'll add a filter here and I'll actually include this in the downloads to this image. But we'll go into our textures filter and I'm gonna go into the category and I'll include this 
texture in the download here, but it's this hazy light one. And I'll go into my mode and I'll choose lighter so that it's a little bit lighter on the scene there. And all we wanna do here for this is just play with the rotation. So I just wanna see where it works best. And I think the bottom works the best because it acts as sort of smoke coming up in the scene. So it's a little bit too intense there. So let's just play with the opacity here and we can sort of fine tune it. And if we hit the backslash key on our keyboard, just by using two LUTs and a texture, we've really made this a much more moody, dramatic portrait. The next creative idea is to use the channel mixer filter to incorporate a black and white infrared look into your scene, or you can also use it to incorporate some really unique colors onto your photo. So with this image here, I'm gonna go in the effects tab, I'll add a filter, and I'll just add the channel mixer filter. And in this channel mixer filter, there's a really handy preset. It's the second preset in, and it's black and white infrared film simulation. So if I select this, you can see right out of the gate, it gives it that beautiful infrared look where the blues are nice and dark and the lighter regions of the scene, especially the whites, are really popping within the photo. Now, because of this look, I wouldn't recommend using a really dark subject. So you can see here this palm tree and then the boat and this foreground region is relatively dark. If you have a brighter subject, remember that the whites and the brighter regions in your infrared are really going to get bright. So with the brighter subject, you may almost have an unrecognizable subject when you convert it to black and white infrared. So just something to keep in mind, I would recommend a little bit darker of a subject that's surrounded by brighter areas. Now remember, in the channel mixer filter, it's not all about that black and white infrared. If I go into this more menu here, I can choose from an array of different styles, especially these false color styles. And I really love the second one here. This false color tool is super fun for just bringing in a little bit of warmth and some cool blues into the image. And even below that, we have these vivid blues and greens and reds that we can use to really make our scene pop if we're needing to. And then there's that black and white infrared, which I think works best with this image. But just to give you an idea, the channel mixer is a really great option, especially if you're looking to incorporate that black and white infrared into your photograph, or you're looking to incorporate some unique creative color onto your scene as well. The last creative tip that I have is to incorporate brush shapes into your photos to incorporate some creative looks into different sections or even just bring some lively elements into your sky. So what I wanna do here with this photograph is I just wanna bring in a brush shape behind the mountains there just to act as sort of a creative element within my scene. So to do that, let's head into the local tab here. And with my local adjustment, I'll just rename this color paint. I'm going to head down here to the bottom section of my local adjustment and I'll choose paint with color. And I'm going to go into the rectangle here with the color and I'm just going to choose white. I'll just choose a white color there. And I already have the brush selected. So to talk about brush shapes, I'm just going to grab the default brush here, this rounded brush. And so I have my brush selected. I can grab my masking brush by hitting B on my keyboard. And what we're going to want to do here to incorporate creative brush shapes is we're going to want to head up to this top tool modifier bar and we're going to go into our shape menu and we can scroll through and find different brush shapes. Now I might be using brush shapes that you don't have downloaded, but every brush shape that I have downloaded you can find in On One's creative library. So if you haven't checked it out, it's a really awesome place for just a plethora of different brush shapes, presets, textures, LUTs, overlays, you name it. So check it out. There's a ton of awesome brush shapes in there, and I'm actually going to be using one from the On One Geometric Brushes Pack. So I'll just scroll down here to the section where I have my geometric brushes right there. I'll grab a brush, and you can see now my brush shape is a little bit different. And I'm actually going to increase that brush size all the way to 2,500, which I can do 
with the right bracket on my keyboard. Remember, right bracket will increase the size, left bracket will decrease the size. And one thing to keep in mind is your feathering and, well, basically these three here, your feathering, opacity, flow, well, there's four, sorry. Your feather, opacity, flow, and angle. Now we're not really too worried about angle unless you have more of, or less of a symmetrical brush, but for these, it's not really too um, worrisome with the angle. But let's say you're using, you know, a, a nature brush or something. If you modify the angle, oops, it's going to make a huge difference of that position of that brush there. So let's just keep the angle at zero. Oops, let me just type in zero there. And I'll go back and I'll grab that geometric brush. And so when it comes to brushing in brush shapes, you want to ensure that your feathering is all the way to zero. If you're using a brush shape, you don't want any feathering at all because the feathering will sort of soften the edges of that brush and you won't get the entirety of that shape in your scene. So ensure your feathering is at zero. I typically keep my opacity and flow at 100 as well. That way I'm just brushing in all of that brush that I want to see in the photo. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to brush this into my photo here. Oops. You wanna make sure your mode at the top there is set to the right um, paint in or paint out mode. And so I need to change that to paint in, which I can also do with shift and X on my keyboard. So I'm set to paint in now, everything's gravy. Let's just paint that in. And there we go. We have a nice creative brush shape within our photograph. But what I wanna do is I want this brush shape to be strictly behind my mountains here. So to do that, let's actually go up into our layers. I'm going to duplicate this mountain layer And we'll just rename this one mountain and we'll rename this one circles. So with our mountain layer selected, I'm going to remove that color paint layer. And then I'm gonna go into my masking options here and I'm gonna choose the mountain just like that. And I'm going to choose apply. Now by default, that's going to paint away the mountain on the scene. It actually looks kind of cool like that. But I'm just going to go into my masking options and I'll invert that mask so that it's opposite. And so that the only thing that's revealed from this mountain layer is in fact the mountain section. And so now we have this nice geometric shape behind the mountains and it's a nice sort of graphic that you can use or post just to add in a little bit more creativity and uniqueness to some of your photography. So let me show you one other instance that's really fun when it comes to brushing and that's brushing in clouds into your scene. So I'm just gonna delete this mountain layer here and with this circles layer, let's just take our color paint mask and reset it. So with our brush shapes here, I'm actually going to choose instead of these geometric brushes here, I'm actually going to head up and I'm going to choose one of these cloud brushes. I'm just gonna choose this one here. And so with my cloud, I'm actually going to decrease the size a little bit, maybe to around 1500 or so. And I'm gonna play with the feathering a little bit, or not the feathering, sorry. I'm gonna play with the angle a little bit just so that it's a little bit more flat within the scene. So let's do around 12. I think that looks pretty good. And so I'm just going to drop that on there. And with that one cloud on the scene, it really does add a little bit more life and a little bit more style into the photograph. So those were some creative ideas you can use on your own photography. I hope you learned some tips and techniques that you can use inside of Photo Raw for your next image edits. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson.